Well, it's been a long time coming, but now, finally, it's time to talk Xevious on Atari 7800. Released in 1988 and based on the 1982 Namco arcade game, it is dangerous, it is devious, and I have a grievance. Wait. Now for those of you who lack any familiarity with Xevious, just step outside and wait for a car to run you over because I don't want to talk to you. But in any event, Xevious is a shooter where you control a little ship and must blow up whatever comes your way. You have your standard blasters to blow up airborne enemies, which are the most active opposition that will obstruct your goal of surviving and attaining a high score. And you also have bombs to take out ground-based targets, such as little turrets and pyramids and tanks and stuff. And then you have flying plates that are indestructible and will kill you if you touch them. In fact, you should avoid anything that moves because they can kill you if you touch them. Just shoot everything and you'll be fine. Xevious is one of those Atari 7800 video games that requires the use of two buttons to play properly. One button for air shots, one button for ground bombs. That means either putting up with the rather cumbersome stock Proline joystick or getting one of those sweet European gamepads. If you were to use any other controller like the Atari 2600 joystick or any stock one button joystick for example, you'll essentially fire both your cannon and your bombs at the same time, which is awkward and somewhat cumbersome at times. While it is workable, it's not preferable, especially if you focus on maintaining a constant stream of fire because every so often you'll drop a bomb and this lessens the precision and it's truly the devious aspect of this dangerously devious Xevious. There's also a bit of a quirk in which if I were to try to input certain controllers, like a Sega Genesis controller for example, the game would not function properly. There would be an instance where I would have the set controller plugged in and it would go straight to the game and would always be firing and I can't move the ship. I don't know if it's an issue with my particular copy or my unit or maybe it's the controller, but it's a partial reasoning as to why it took me a long time to give this game a proper playthrough and look. But when using a proper gamepad or a joystick, controls actually pretty decent, fairly responsive, no real complaints in this regard. Per tradition on the Atari 7800, Xevious gives you four difficulty levels to choose from, which essentially alters the kind of opposition you'll be facing, which generally gets determined by how well or how poorly you're performing throughout the game. Gameplay in general matches that of the arcade original in regards to secrets, enemy AI, and challenge level. The only thing it really doesn't adapt is the vertical aspect ratio of the play area, but that's to be expected. No, but Xevious is a slow-paced but otherwise intense and adaptable shooter that plays rather well on the Atari 1700. Compared to the arcade version or other conversions I've touched on, this version holds its own just fine. In regards to visuals, when one compares this Atari 1700 version of Xevious to the equivalent release on the Nintendo Entertainment System, it's clear that Xevious looks rougher on the 7800, given the overall lack of sharpness in the graphics and the somewhat lower resolution compared to the NES version. However, there are things that the 7800 version does well that the NES version lacks. For example, there are more defined terrain textures on the 7800 version as opposed to the NES version's mostly solid color terrain. Shorelines and divides in their terrain are more defined and appear much more naturally on the 7800, whereas the NES version has shorelines with lots of sharp, jagged lines that feels more like a collage of cutouts pasted onto a piece of bristol board than any semblance of natural terrain. Most of all, when you reach the flying fortress boss thing on certain waves, it'll actually fly at you, attack for a while, and then fly away, which is more consistent with the arcade original. The NES version makes the fortress part of the background, which gives players more of a chance to kill the thing, as it'll advance slowly, stop for a while, and then advance forwards. These are touches that makes the Atari 7800 version feel a bit more authentic in its conversion from the arcade original, and taking away the comparisons to the NES counterpart, Xevious on its own merits looks fairly decent if not a bit on the rough side. Sound in Xevious is decent, the opening jingle is a bit off-key, but the background ditty, the sound effects, and explosions do a fair job of recreating the arcade sounds, which is a tremendous credit to a video game system whose sound hardware was basically recycled from a more ancient video game system. Not much to say in this regard, you got some pretty decent sound quality here. Given a choice of bringing Xevious home in 1988, 
One can claim that the NES version slightly edges out the 7800 version with generally sharper quality in regards to visual and sound. But I much prefer the 7800 version, which is still very much a quality outing of Xevious, not only managing to successfully maintain and adapt the gameplay to do a T, but also manages little details not found on the NES port. Xevious is a game that is best played with a two-button controller, be it the stock Proline or the European gamepads, but is still fairly manageable with any single-button controller. All in all, Xevious got a nice treatment on the 7800 and is another in a long line of quality arcade conversions available for the console. Definitely one worth adding to the collection if you don't already have it.